I'm still kind of new to Sir Spook. Even though, yes, there's been like, what, 14 videos on my channel, 13 videos on my channel already are from Sir Spook. I don't know how to read him when it comes to his upload. He posted, because today is the last part of the 66 videos, but he posted a 70 scary video video. What do I do? People who are used to Sir Spook's videos, it's normal that he does maybe like five to six videos. That's 10 to 13 videos each. And then he just drops like a mega video. If so, I don't mind it. Because if it was a mega video, then down the line, maybe I could do a live stream of just me going through all of the videos in one sitting and just upload a VOD or a edited. I don't know. I'll figure it out down the line. Who knows? Who cares? At the, at the moment, it is what it is. Today is the last part of the 66 videos. This is 11 to 1. Next time, I guess I'll just do the 15s. 70 to what? 56. And then 55 to... No, it's 14 per video. I'm so stupid. I'm sorry, guys. It's going to be 14 per video. Not 15. I'll figure out the math and post. But as you can see in the side of the videos, this will be the lineup for the five videos. These will be the three videos. And these will be the other two. Those will be in the future of the channel. Or that 70 video thingy a Bob. Yeah. Unfortunately, guys, this will be the last time I'll be doing hard reactions for a little while. I'll be uploading a whole bunch of Elden Ring content. Once all of those are uploaded, I'll come back into doing our reactions. So for those who enjoy these hard reactions, you might have to wait about a month or two to have hard reactions come back. Now let's get into it. If you were to take a quick look at Eon Jones' YouTube channel, you would find a liquid of videos crystal the popular Pokemon video game series, which is obviously nothing scary. However, there's one particular video on his channel that certainly stands out like a sore thumb for being absolutely terrifying. In the description of the video, Eon provides a little bit of context, right? Yeah, to, like quote, evolutions. I was an abandoned nursing home. In the first video, I was just trying to be creepy and post it to TikTok before I realized I actually got something. The second video, I returned with a friend of mine because I wanted to have someone there to share the proof. We weren't prepared to handle what was going to happen. End quote. So now, with all that context out of the way, let's take a look and see what Eon was able to recall that day. These are clips where I find a little bit more real when people have nothing to do with the paranormal type of videos and they catch something and upload it. As Eon walks down the dark and deserted corridor of the abandoned nursing home, a figure appears at the end of the corridor. Whether it's a threat or not is anybody's guess. In the second video that Eon took while in the nursing There's home, two videos. he's walking around the building with his friend, trying to film proof of paranormal activity within the area, and sure enough, he gets exactly what he wished for. Have a listen. Whatever it is, I just... I can tell. Yeah, there's nothing there. Hey, let's go. Alright. I know I saw something, and I know I'm not fucking crazy. <laughs> Bro, the velocity of how fast I'll be fucking running after hearing that, I will be out a window. Fuck stairs, fuck doors. Nearest window, I've been out. Dolphin dive, Call of Duty style. Hell no. Hell no. An extremely chilling demon-like scream can be heard coming from somewhere within the building. But obviously, as soon as the two friends hear this, they try their best to run as fast as they can away from the area to make it out of there alive. Thankfully, they do, but it still doesn't make this piece of footage any less terrifying. What was making that guttural scream? And what was that figure in the first video? These are questions that will never be answered. The scream did sound kind of human-like. You have heavy metal for a reason. I can't personally do it. It is possible for the grunging noises 
to be heard in heavy metal or rock like music. It's that grungy throat singing, whatever how you call it or how you describe it. It sounds like a person doing a heavy metal scream. So maybe it's a third person involved. Just saying, but still. Even if it was a human, I ain't fucking around finding out. Evox on Twitter recently tagged me in a tweet Evox. that went a bit viral. He said that the CCTV footage was caught on the security cameras of a store near his house. His grandma used to own the building, so when the new owner saw the video, he immediately sent it to them. Evix also stated that it couldn't be outside lights, because there's no windows in the room. Hmm. Oh, it's a shimmer. Mist. After tagging me, I decided to contact him privately. He gave me the following information. Quote, also, the original owners kept their kids' toys in a storage area that used to exist under the stairs. And according to my grandma, who bought it from the original owners, they sold it because their child passed away and they wanted a fresh start. The way it leaps over the staircase and seems to go under the stairs makes me think maybe it's the ghost of the kid and he's looking for something to play with." End quote. From the information gathered, Makes a lot it of sense. seem like this could possibly be the ghost of a child. It's certainly a compelling piece of footage and going by the replies to this tweet, it would seem that many others believe this to be a real ghost sighting. What do you guys think? This is a theory I always thought about and I may not be a fully believer of paranormal stuff, but I always had the idea that we as humans have electricity and the more we spend time with a particular object, the more charges we give that item. I'm always brushing my beard. Even if I shave down a little bit or if I have my beard long, it's just a habit for me to, to kind of groom my beard with the longevity that I've had with me always grooming with this particular brush. I feel like if I were to move on, I might have a attachment to this. A lot of my electricity or energy has been transferred to this throughout the years. That's just one of my ideas. I feel like it doesn't really affect toys with or items with electronics because it has its own energy anything that doesn't deal with electricity batteries or anything like that I think those hold on to electricity longer than those that actually do possess it but i feel like if i were to move on i might have an attachment to this brush that's just an idea i have so with this kid i feel like there's a maybe a certain toy that kid played with they didn't specify which kid passed away if it was a granddaughter or a grandson but whatever that child play with the most that child has an attachment to that specific toy that's what i believe yep see so it's like play on a, the stairs the paranormies are a fast growing youtube channel that frequently uploads videos depicting abandoned building explorations as well as general paranormal investigations all of them being highly unique and terrifying in nature the backstory okay. behind this investigation goes as follows. Richard inherited his grandparents' house after they passed away. After some time in the house, he began hearing noises coming from the attic. Richard decides to check the attic, thinking there could be an animal, but finds nothing except for a journal. Reading through the journal, there are descriptions of animal torture and sacrificial rituals, and the murder of a man. After that, but, uh, she paranormal rolled. activity in the house got worse, so he decided to set up cameras while he was gone. The following piece of footage was recorded by Richard in the middle of the night. Right from the second it starts, it certainly gives off unsettling vibes, and those uncomfortable feelings turn out to be for good reason. Look at this creepy incident that occurs involving his phone. Okay, that was three years ago. Okay, phone lit Phone got tossed. Then, 
another scene is shown that was filmed in the kitchen area of Richard's house, and at first, Four years everything ago. seems to be completely normal and innocent. But take a good look at the water machine, and you will see that something is very amiss here. Bro, drinking water at 3 a.m. from that canister? A different. A light on. Water is being used. Then a different angle a few moments later shows some very creepy things happening in the kitchen. Take a look. Hard to see if anybody, hard to see who it was. Yeah, right. Um, but you also mentioned on the phone when we talked to you that there was some, there was an odor um, as well. Yeah, it almost smelled like a, a butcher shop. That's a voice with them deep. Yeah. Um, oh, it was like a butcher shop. Some of the best paranormal footage that, that I've ever seen. Um, hey, all the spices, all the coffee mugs. I honestly have no idea. He sounds like. What are you hoping to find out from our investigation? Well, I'm kind of hoping that. Oh, they are masking his voice. They're able to bring peace. He sounded like the cartel members, like when they did those reports or investigations back in the days. I forgot who was that reporter, but they will interview these cartel members, and it would just there would just be a black silhouette and they're talking. And their voice was sound like this: with the bricks of under a boat, another layer of the boat, and we'll just interlace them in between a little gap. And we will sell that boat across the pond into America. Or we'll grow a whole bunch of avocados. And we'll cut the avocado in half to remove the seed. And then put bricks off in the middle. And then we'll ship a whole bunch of them into America. That is how we used to do it back in Mexico. The cartel. That's what I envision when I hear the guy speak. A while later in the video, the paranormies are using an Oculus device in one of the bedrooms, which speaks to them, saying, Reason. Then immediately afterward, this happens. Reason. Reason? Reason. Did you have... What reason did you have? No way. Oh, holy shit. Okay, that's kind of... After this, hmm. they proceed to head outside to the exact spot where coordinates were given to them in a journal, fully expecting to find evidence, animal bones, or some sort of ritual, or maybe even a body. But while they are out there, they hear something truly terrifying, something that no body would want to hear outside in a desolate area, much less at night. Watch and listen to this. Ow. <coughs> what is that firewood? Oh my god! Oh. Motherfucker, turn off the, the light! In video, we see more footage that was filmed from Richard in what appears to be a living room, and it doesn't take long at all for things to get a little unsettling. Look at what was captured. A hand? A couple of minutes later, the paranormies are sitting down at a table for a moment, but still making sure that they are still recording. It's a good thing that will follow. A couple of minutes. To get a little unsettling, look at what Wait, was captured. And then the register, what just happened? Oh, bro, what, you literally blink and you missed that. The paranormies are sitting down at a table for a moment. But missed still that making sure three times. That still recording. It's a good thing that they were. Otherwise, they would not have been able to capture this terrifying incident on camera. Okay. 
Oh, that freaked yeah. the shit out of me. What yeah, is now it? it's leveled. Now Level? It, now it's starting to say stuff. That's exactly what happened, like, in his video. At the 12 minute mark in the investigation, they are finally trying to make communication with any potential spirits in the area, when the man behind the camera urges any potential spirits in the room to let us know you're here. Judging by what happens next, I think this spirit hurt him. Let us know you're here. Why is this hat so damn low? Thank you. Oh my hands are shaking. The group then conducts the investigation in other areas of the house, but are stopped short when they hear something eerie coming from the upstairs area. Ew, ew, Listen to this. Air? It does. It sounds like somebody else is in this house. Oh my god. That's loud. That's... Where is that coming from? It sounds like it's coming from behind me. Like up here. Some people wouldn't dare go upstairs after hearing a sound like that coming from the area. I won't. But the paranormies are determined to get to the bottom of this and figure out what is in this house messing with them. One of the crew members walks downstairs for a moment, carrying his ovulus device, which says something very creepy. He then asks the spirit to scream for him, and while it doesn't obey that command, it does do something else rather remarkable that definitely gives them the proof they need that they are not alone in that house. Look at this. Okay. Scream. Scream? Can you scream for me? Can you imagine? Whoa, light just went on again. Oh my god. If this video is authentic mm. and nothing about it was staged in any way, then I must say that the Paranormis video is definitely creepy and is amazing proof of the existence of the paranormal. I mean, that investigation seems more realistic than what you see with ghost adventures with zach vegas and stuff like that there's not a lot of voices there's not a lot of apparitions and a lot of this it's just a lot of noises footsteps banging flickering the lights so it seems a little bit more authentic home videos from back when your sons or daughters were just little kids can for most families be some of the most precious videos in the world because you're able to essentially go through a virtual time machine True. and see life as it was for you and your family years in the past. I have hundreds of hours of home videos of when I was a, basically a one-year-old fetus to when I was a fetus in my mom's stomach to when I was just a sperm swimming my dad's balls. My mom has VHS tapes of all those times when before me and my sister were alive before i was alive after my sister's birth and i was just you know in my mom's belly after i was a couple months and a couple years so there's hundreds of footage i would actually now like to go through this footage to see if there's anything particular in the background in short a home video of your kids is often a video you cherish and upon first glance this video of a young boy dancing along to a song by the rock band Green Day is exactly that too, an innocent and cute video. But this home video soon takes an incredibly sinister and unsettling turn. Dan. Dan, look at Liza, go like this. Liza, hey, like this. Liza, look it, hey. Liza, go like this. Were you dancing to uh, some Green Day? Yeah. Dance, go. The dancing boy turns around after a few moments, and it's then when he starts to look at something, this something strangely resembling that of another young boy. But if you look carefully, oh. you can tell for certain oh. that it's not a reflection from a mirror or anything like that. 
but rather a completely different child. Oh. In my opinion, this is one of the most unexplainable and creepy pieces of paranormal footage out there because it begs the question, if this is not paranormal in nature, then what else could it possibly be? I don't think we will ever get the answer. Hell no. Oh, hell no. No! It had a face, it was just like a, an all black. It's like fucking like Organization 13 from Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, it's like Organization 13. It's like fucking Ansem. Dora, give me the Keyblade. Ansem, no! Dora, give me the Keyblade. Us in Organization 13, we're gonna open Kingdom Hearts. And we'll finally get our own hearts and no longer be nobodies. Ansem, no! Gosh! Don't fucking do it again! Okay. A man named Chris runs a YouTube channel called Urbex Hill. Ten thousand dollars found inside an abandoned prison. Was there any abandoned shit there by my house? Hey, money. Which is a great spot for those who love to watch urban exploration style videos. This video of his published in August of 2021. Oh, Urban X. No I didn't hear the name of this in the video, channel. Chris is exploring a haunted abandoned historic temple that was built all the way back in 1905. Its original purpose being an old telephone company. Throughout the decades, it changed to many different places, including a women's club, but was eventually turned into a Masonic temple in 1985. However, okay. The building was left abandoned in the year 2000 after Freemasons decided to go elsewhere. Ever since then, it has been untouched. The nearly 20 minute video is packed full of creepy bits and is sure to satisfy those who love urban exploration videos. But without a doubt the most unsettling moment comes about midway through the footage when Chris walks into a massive room that seems to be completely empty. Except it isn't. It's really sad that they let this historical place fall apart like this. Wow. Damn, man. Just this is crazy. dangling from the ceiling. You know what? I'm done with the 70 videos. Or Elden Ring. I'm gonna go watch his videos. It may be hard to see when initially viewed, but when the clip is slowed down, and the brightness is adjusted, you can see what appears to be a dark shadow walk inside a room before disappearing entirely. Chris states that while he was filming in that room, he thought he saw something move out of the corner of his eye, but wasn't entirely sure because of how dark it was in the room. When he reviewed the clip later on, however, all of his worst suspicions were proven to be true. What do you think this dark figure is, and what were its intentions? Is it really an entity, or is it just a trick somehow? Be Never sure trust it. Know all your ideas in the comments below. Never trust it. It's like a fart. Never trust it. Amy's Crypt is one of the most popular channels on YouTube when it comes to videos relating to the paranormal and horror in general. Her channel is loaded with great authentic content that I highly recommend you check authentic, out. Authentic, quote unquote. Unexplained mysteries, creepy rituals, abandoned building explorations, and plenty more to keep you entertained. In one particular video uploaded to Amy's channel on October 25th, 2020, she ventures out to an old haunted church, which appears to be run down and where many have claimed to have experienced paranormal activity. The video in question is over 40 minutes long and is jam-packed with tons of creepy content for you all to enjoy. But one of the creepiest moments happens at around the 27 minute mark when Amy sits down in a certain area of the church and hears strange noises that frighten her. Okay. Take a look. Strange sounds as in like... Did somebody say Tom earlier? Oof. What was that? Uh, a slam. What just happened? The sound shifted. Oh, what was that? Oh, what was that? 
What happened? It's at the Didn't table right in the middle, right here. Yeah, push it's against the wall. The I'm turn it off. Is there somebody down there? Oh yeah, it said her name too. Something balancing or something like that. She didn't catch that. Something balancing or something like that. Uh, what the heck? Uh, what the heck? What the heck? Fiddle stick. Just a couple of minutes later, Amy proceeds to another room in the church and begins to sit down for a little bit. But they seemingly can find peace even when taking a breather because something odd gains their attention. Look at this. I don't know. Let me come around that so people can see. So this is Amy's well, look, box. That, that it's not puts... like a floppy thing. Like, I actually need to... And the cap was gone off now. It's at moving. Oh, those are cops. It moved. Am I making it? You can blame faulty batteries or electronics within the ball. But that seems like reaching for answers at that point. Of course, it is entirely possible, but ruling out the paranormal doesn't seem fair. Regardless, okay. Amy's video has plenty of moments that are sure to give you the creeps. Okay, now I'll just add another channel. Oh. Xiaolong, Okabatoki, Michael from Korea, Urban X Hill, and Amy's Crypt. They're all channels where I actually feel intrigued to watch independently for their investigations. Let me know what you think about that. Over on the backwards creepy subreddit, users can find a wide variety of terrifying videos taking place in the wilderness. This particular video Woods. was recorded by Throat Sing King, who was out in the woods oh. one day when he recorded this footage. In it, we watch him as he sings outside, practicing his vocals when right from the beginning we can see a dark figure standing far in the distance take a look and see pretty sure he was looking for where the sound was coming from but i stopped and started talking and now he's confused but as soon as the man starts to sing things get incredibly strange little did he know that towards the end of the footage he ended up recording something truly terrifying that's sure to chill his bones when he goes back to review the footage later on. Is that the... A bizarre humanoid type figure can be seen Damn. in the distance causing many commenters to be confused and creeped out by the frightening discovery. There are even a few skeptics in the comments who are having a difficult time explaining the figure away at the end of the video. So what do you think this figure is in Throat Sing King's video? Do you think this is a humanoid entity? Is it just a person? Be sure to let me know your thoughts on this entity in the comment section down below. Let me just entertain the idea of in walkers and all the paranormal stuff and ghosts and whatever. Let me just entertain it as it's a truly real thing. I'm a skeptic. That is why I'm saying let's believe it's real. People out there who do believe it's real, they have all rights to. They have their own experiences. They have their own beliefs. They have their own faiths. Let's not knock them. Let's just make it into a reality. Not trying to say you guys are delusional for those who believe in it. I'm just saying in my petite tiny brain my pea-sized brain i don't have the ability to believe that it's real for the fact of skinwalkers for the facts of abc xyz my brain doesn't believe in it but let's just put water in my pea-sized brain and grow it into a actual fucking ficus or a tree if you look into the lore of skinwalkers those could be traced back into the native times as in the true americans yeah, yeah, basically the true Americans. Everybody else are all foreigners. Everybody else are illegal immigrants. If you are not Native American, you are an illegal immigrant. Besides that point, skinwalkers 
derive from natives. So imagine being a skinwalker, not hearing certain things that you're used to or you're accustomed to hundreds of years ago because the stupid Spaniards wanted to kill off your race. Then you hear some Native American throat singing in your forest. Of course, you're going to be intrigued. Like, what the fuck? It's, it's back? They're back? We're back? That's my thoughts. The final spot on today's list comes from the popular Reddit thread, Paranormal Reddit, where users can upload videos relating to the paranormal, usually looking for answers. User Lazy Ray Scallion published a video on the Scallion. where he explains that the footage that is with ramen. camera footage of a conference room and that it was sent to him by a family member. The video is extremely short, clocking in at just 10 seconds in length, but 10 seconds is more than enough to send a shiver down your spine. Take hey, a look ladies. and see if you could spot what is so creepy about this video. All you need is 10 seconds, ladies. In case from... you missed it, in the background, we can see a black shadowy figure walking around and then disappearing shortly after, almost like it wasn't even there. Zooming in and slowing down the footage doesn't really make it easier to come up with a good explanation. It could very well be achieved with the help of visual effects or camera trickery, but it's hard to be certain. It is still unknown to this day what the conference room footage captured, but whatever it is, it is definitely a scary piece of footage. Yeah, especially that it happened at midnight exactly. TikTok user Mafia300C uploaded a series of three different videos from varying angles to their account on August 28th, 2022. That seems to showcase something legitimately unnerving in an office okay. building window directly in front of him. The uploader can be seen filming an office building in front of him, which looks to be normal enough. Some of the lights are on, seemingly suggesting that people are still inside working. But as normal as this building may look, there's something genuinely eerie about it that the uploader is about to witness firsthand in just a moment and will surely scare him for the rest of his life. Okay. Let's take a look. All right. Can you, can you see this thing? Yeah, it's still there. Okay. What's happening with the lights? Because I'm, dude, I'm looking the, 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 the lights the are, hallway, and the, I can't see, like, I literally see nothing. The lights are off right now. Oh, it just moved. It just moved. No, it did not. It just oh, moved. Yeah. It just yeah. moved. I just heard a weird fucking noise. Move. Please don't tell me that as you said that. Dude, it just moved. No. Hmm. There is clearly something quite odd that appears in the office building window that the uploaders freaked out by, and understandably so. Take a look at the other videos to see what else was captured. So these are different Don't POVs. Security. I just want to talk. Security. I love this building. This building's so cool. Did you throw that? Throw what, dude? I just heard something. Something, something just threw across the room. What? Dude, I something just. I'm, I'm, I'm outside the door. I don't have access to that unit. Oh, I don't, I don't even that. think I got it on video. My, my phone was just mm. tangled up. But something just got thrown at the window. Security, please open the door. I know you're in there. Something just got thrown again. No, I did. Did you hear it in his phone side? I'm out. I'll be down in a minute. Does anything look broken? Like glass? Um, Security, I know you're in there. What was that? Yeah, what was that noise? Dude, that was just behind me. Was that like a fire alarm or something? I, no, dude, it was a squeak noise. Like something just moved behind me. I mean, what the f***? What do you make of these clips? Was there some sort of spirit roaming the halls of the office building that night? If so, Hi, what did it want? Um, Be sure to leave your theories in the uh, comment section down below. There's too many unknowns. The fact that you can't see him at all. And the fact that it sounds loud when the thing gets hit against the glass. 
But it could be him away from the window, throw something and just like, what? What was that noise? What was that noise? It must be the wind. What was that noise? What was that noise? There's too many oddities. The following stories are part of the SCP Foundation series and mm. is simply titled Substation 9. The SCP. The story in question follows an unnamed man who says that he works as a security guard at a facility during the graveyard shift, checking let me be. substations to make sure an OCB hasn't been tripped. Let he me says be. that the area is a couple thousand acres of woodlands, rivers, and country roads, with the occasional warehouse in a field and says that calling it remote would not do it justice. Sadly, he explains that the townsfolk were forced to flee after a colossal flood destroyed a large portion of the surrounding area. But as for his job, he explains that he does the exact same thing every single day. Check substations and pumps to make sure they're fully operational and in working order. Some of the tunnels he worked in are centuries old, Okay. and the blueprints of which have been destroyed by the devastating flood. Because of this, he says that there is an almost colloquially shared statement that nobody should go I inside know that the word means. Don't wander, don't explore, go down, do your job, and come right back up. No funny business. And one last thing, always bring a backup flashlight just in case your other one dies. Otherwise, you're screwed. Wow. You want me to go work there? Like fucking outlast. The farthest anybody has ever gone in the tunnel is 500 yards, and nobody has any clue as to what lurks even further down than that. It's a complete mystery. Oh. For the next little while in this post, the uploader explores the tunnel's conditions and what it's like to be down inside them stating that all workers must enter with an O2 monitor because they are worried about small pockets of nitrogen that can be hard to detect with the human eye. He also says okay, that fair. a lot of the time, the tunnel often smells horrendous. As for the whole two flashlight Mode. thing, the uploader clarifies that once the battery dies on the other, if you don't have a backup, you'll be shrouded in endless miles of darkness with no phone reception. In other words, you may die down there. This is where things start to get interesting. The uploader talks about his co-worker who he identifies as John, saying that he was a clever man and good for numbers. John kept to himself a lot of the time and was a quiet person who didn't bother anyone. One year during a thaw, some pumps were getting overwhelmed, too much water was coming in and they simply couldn't pump it fast enough. John wanted to hook up some of these old centrifugal pumps that were sitting around in the basements. Although it was a lot of work, John stuck to his plan and hunted down every pump he could find, serviced them, hooked them up with hoses, and managed to keep the substations dry all the way into late spring. A few days after things got under control, the uploader did a swap and ended up coming in during a day shift. When he arrived at the trailer, John's mm -hmm. truck, and more importantly, John himself, was gone. The latest entry in the job logbook mentioned heading out to check on a sump pump in one of the substations. So, without hesitation, he rallied up a bunch of fellow workers to go into the substations, but they were all baffled when they couldn't find a single trace of John whatsoever, no matter how hard they looked. At one point, the uploader even called the police, but they too couldn't find him. Fast forward one year later, another co-worker named Patrice took the uploader aside and showed him something that was found during one of her rounds. A flashlight with dead batteries, tape wrapped around it with John's initials written on it. He goes on wow. to answer some more questions about what he does for work, but one thing truly struck a chord with readers. He says, Patrice said that on at least three separate occasions, she has heard something like muffled old-timey radio music playing from below. Months go by, and the uploader says that a co-worker named Ed has shockingly found John's phone, going through his photos all look normal and familiar, except for a few places the crew simply did not recognize. 
Bizarrely, John's phone was found in Substation 9, but the aforementioned logbook did not state that was the substation Ooh. he was checking on that day. A little later, police were called to do another investigation and sure enough, they think they found John's body. Here's where it gets really scary. The last post the uploader would ever add onto this story simply reads, it wasn't John's body. And this is the final video attached to the story, where something truly creepy can be heard. Uh, this is fucking terrifying. Holy hell. It's like a real, like, horror movie. You would not catch me fucking dead investigating places like this. That is fucking insane. That's a negative. That's a negative. The one person said old timey music. There has to be somebody living in there. Bro, I... No, 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 no. It's like a horror video game. I hope you haven't been following this story at night. Otherwise, now you are almost certain to be in bed with the blankets pulled up over your face. Sweet dreams. Fuck you, Star Spook. Chris from the YouTube channel Urbex Hill has pretty much seen it all at this point. For years now, he has posted videos to his channel that focus on him exploring some of the creepiest abandoned buildings in the world, including churches, schools, libraries and more. In this particular video, published to his channel in April of 2022, Chris ventures out to explore some mysterious tunnels that prove to be more than a bargain for. In the description of the upload, Chris writes, quote, Today I explored a mysterious tunnel and saw something strange. I took on one of the most dangerous explorations that I've ever attempted. Over the course of one whole day, I traversed more than 10 miles and a confusing and seemingly endless tunnel system hidden deep within the forest. As I entered the portal, I noticed it was oddly quiet and I began to have a strange feeling I was being watched. While I continued to explore deeper within the tunnels, I started to notice signs that I may not be alone, which led me to have one of the most terrifying encounters I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. So with that context out of the way, let's get into it. At around the 18 minute mark, Chris is wandering around the tunnels when he suddenly pauses and looks to his right. What he sees next is absolutely pulse pounding. And when you see graffiti, you're not alone. Hell no. Hell no. You're going?
two incredibly fast creatures can be seen darting from around the corner before eventually retreating back into their hiding spots. Amazingly, if Chris did indeed see these two horrifying creatures, he didn't seem to be too bothered by them. About 20 minutes later, towards the end of the video, Chris is wandering down a terrifyingly dark corridor where the only thing he can hear is the sound of water rushing underneath his feet. But in just a moment, a new sound is added to the mix. Bro, a couple of minutes later, Chris is thankfully able to make it out of the tunnels in one piece. However, despite the fact that he made it out alive, there's no denying that there was certainly something viscous and terrifying waiting for him in the tunnels. Whatever it is, it's probably best that we don't ever find out. That's weird movement. I don't like that movement. I do not like that movement at all. The and then rush back in. Nah, brother. Nah. Whew. Guys, this has been 66 videos. It took me six videos to do so. I hope you guys enjoyed this series I did. He uploaded 71, so 14 per video. I don't know. Again, I'm going to be taking the hiatus of scary videos for a little while. Elden Ring is the hottest game at the moment. And though I'm kind of late, it better being semi-late and to never upload it. So I've been focusing tremendously on trying to get as much Elden Ring content up, so... I'm going to be posting that Monday, Wednesday, Fridays for the next month to two months. And then once all that is uploaded, I'll come back to doing scale reactions. Hope you guys enjoyed this 66 videos. Can't wait to start doing the 70. If there's any specific investigation of those five individuals who I mentioned before, Shaolong, Michael, Obagatoki, Urban X Hills, and now Amy Crypt. If there's any specific investigation from any of those five people you want me to watch, Please let me know in the comment section below. I'll go ahead and watch it. Until next time, guys. As always, I love your faces. And I'm out. Peace.